So welcome to iPhotography's uh, small fantasy lighting tutorial example. It's been something that a lot of iPhotography students have been asking for recently. So we put together just a little kind of step-by-step -step guide as things that you can consider and actions that you can take when using Photoshop to add a little bit more of a, a mystical, more ethereal look to your photographs. Now, this may be different and require different steps and different features for every photograph. So we're just trying to give you some generic pointers to look out for to add that kind of nice atmosphere um, in a lot of kind of fantasy lighting uh, photographs that you see kind of online. So we've taken this shot here that I've taken um, and it kind of has that nice kind of soft ethereal vibe that we've been talking about already that we want to reach. So let's just have a look at a couple of different things that we can do. I mean, firstly, it's all about making sure that the image is strong to begin with. We're not looking for aspects where it's completely overblown through most of the photograph where it's not over contrasted. We're looking for a nice kind of simple, evenly lit base. Now, though the sky up here is a little bit bright in terms of overexposure, that's not so much of a problem because one of the first steps we're actually going to do um, is to uh, change it a little bit. So initially, I'm going to duplicate this layer because I always like to have duplicate layers to work from so I can kind of blend back a little bit and reduce the effect depending upon what I add. So it's kind of like a, my version of uh, non-destructive editing. So to do that initially, if you want to follow these same steps and then just go to layer, duplicate layer. So you can name it if you want, but I'm not going to for this instance. Now, if you head into filter and go down to render. So I'm using the most up-to-date version of Photoshop. I think this is currently Photoshop uh, 2021. So if your uh, uh, filter option panels or any other panels look a little bit different, that's possibly why. So as long as you've got the most up-to-date version, you should be able to follow step by step. Now in the render panel, we've got a number of different options here, but lens flare is the one that we're going to jump to first. Now, lens flare basically gives us the option of rendering a different type of lighting effect um, based upon different styles of lenses. I don't think they, I've not found personally anyway, that they they kind of add up exactly the same way as you'd see them in camera because it's all about position and intensity of lights. But let's just take one, for example, we'll start off with this 50 to 300 mil uh, zoom effect that they've got. And then using the little preview screen, you can press on the crosshair, hold down and move around that lighting effect to see exactly where it's going to land. Uh, where it's going to land and then you can also see where the actual flares that it kicks out where that's going to fall now you want to make sure you're actually positioning that light source in a relative position to the lighting on your subject as well so uh, with alex here in as our subject the light itself i know is coming from above her obviously with it being the sun um but further around to the side so it's not so much right behind her so we need to bring that light source if we can right into that top corner now you can adjust the brightness of it so it can go really bright, but obviously you can see in the preview screen that is going to completely detract from our subject. So let's bring it a little bit lower down, about 180. So then if we press OK, it adds that flare effect to our photograph. So we get a little bit of a light orb in this bottom corner, but it's pretty much blown out most of that top right hand corner, but gives us a nice gradient. So it's already given us a nice soft base to work from. So the benefit of using multiple layers, as I said, by having a duplicate is that A, I can jump back really quickly. I can also reduce the opacity that if I like it, but maybe it was a bit too much, I can just reduce it. So nothing different is happening on the layer underneath. We're just softening back the top version. So that's that kind of gives me a little bit of flexibility because some of these lighting and filter effects, they don't have adjustable layers. Um, so I can't go back and change them later on. Um, so this is just my way of being able to kind of render it kind of, uh, you know, uh, change it a little bit every now and again if I need to based upon other effects I'm going to put in. So it's just a little tip I'd say I find is useful, but you don't have to use yourself. So anyway, let's come back to our image. Now we want to start adding in the color because I think that's the thing that's going to kind of give us the, the overall feel and the overall vibe to the shot. So we're going to start by using our color lookup option. So we press that and it gives us a little uh, pop up panel uh, that says properties. And there's a few different options here. We don't need to look at all of them. It's this 3D LUT, uh, so 3D lookup table. Um, so this is basically presets that contain different color values and kind of presets that can be applied to an image and they render them based upon the actual colors and the tones of the image in there. So they relate differently and they won't always look exactly the same um, if I used a different image. So it's, it's kind of a bit of trial and error, but that's part of the creativity and the, and the fun, especially if using a Photoshop. But when you're creating this kind of fantasy look, um, there isn't one standard that everybody needs to follow. So 
within that uh, first option there you get a drop down table and there's loads of different presets built in here you can if you're not sure what you're looking for the best thing i say to do is if you're using windows computer is to click on the first one and then use the arrow keys to go down i think it's a bit different with Macs; they may not have that option um, so you may just have to do it manually but let's just kind of walk you through some of the options and straight away you can see how it completely changes the vibe and the style of the image which is amazing but so this is the first one that's 25 trip it's called and then I can just cycle through some will just completely not work at all others may give a quite nice softer that kind of always been talking that ethereal um, fantasy look to our image um, so it's just a case of going through that's kind of quite nice and interesting I think maybe with a, a bit of a tweak still to be added that's quite nice as well if you want something a bit more gritty a bit more darker so some are very very similar some really don't suit the image that's actually kind of quite nice in summary that's a Kodak uh, 5218 if you're interested uh, this moonlight one's quite nice it darkens a lot of the the image overall and then it's kind of quite a nice uh, wild one at the very end there so yeah I'll tell you what hmm what should we go for I think I quite like I like that one but I think it's a bit too much maybe that's a bit too dark I think we go with that Kodak one actually that Kodak one that we talked about at 5218 that was quite nice there so let's kind of work off that for a moment so now that we've got our initial lookup table applied to the image um, it's tweaked the colors a little bit if we just click on and off you can see it's added a bit of an effect you may want to change that a little bit more and you can do using things like the opacity slider you can just grade it in a little bit more so it's not as full-on if you think it was a bit kind of too much um, but then it's a case of now we can still go back and, and kind of add more to that on top as well. So we actually, I think what we could possibly do in this instance is add an overall color blend. Because the one thing that works so well with fantasy tutorials is that the colors um, are really, really tight. And there's only a very small palette of colors and news. Sometimes it's three or four, but they're all toned very nicely. Now within our image, we've got these red leaves. We've got the green leaves. We've got the white dress, the red, the red brown hair. So there's not too many colors. Um, but I think it could be unified a little bit further. So if we add another adjustment layer, and I think this time we're actually going to add a gradient. So let's use our gradient tool at the top here. Now, again, there is some instant presets that will be put on there, which you may not want to use at all. But if you go into the little drop down panel, let's open it a bit further. And you can see there's loads of different options, um, some like nice, quite soft cloud effects. Um, they're not actually kind of cloud um, objects like shapes or anything, but they're just the types of tones that you would maybe see. So if you wanted it quite light and airy, that could be quite nice. Uh, there's some grays, again, greens, lots of different variations there. So it's just picking out ones depending upon the style that kind of um, that fantasy style that you're looking for now i quite like these iridescence and these pastels here so even though we've not really got anything in the way of greens uh, sorry any any purples within our image this is the opportunity to, to add them because fantasy portraits or fantasy uh, lighting and, and these kind of tutorials they're there to kind of create something that doesn't exist to begin with so it's really a case of choosing whatever you fancy um i quite like let me see. I think we'll kind of choose this middle one here, this kind of pastel color one. So again, we can still change it a little bit in terms of the positions of the actual gradient. If you want it on a bit more of an angle, if you want it top to bottom, it really depends upon the actual finish that you're looking for. But I think I'd be kind of quite happy with it from there. Now, what I'm going to do to make the image reappear is have a look at the blending modes. So let's just actually bring the layers panel in a bit closer here. Let's expand it. And using the layer blending modes, I'm going to go through a few different ones here and see which kind of renders the interaction between the image beneath and the gradient best. So we'll just have a look. Some may work better than others. This is the way I tend to work. I don't kind of have so much of a plan exactly about what I'm going to achieve at the end, because if I can't get it or if it doesn't work that way for the original image, I kind of get a bit stumped and thinking, right, where do I go next? So I kind of like to let it unfurl a little bit without going at it too much with a particular angle. And that said, I really like that. I quite like the effect that's given there. It's a soft pink to purples. Now I may draw the, the effect back a little bit. So we do retain some of that green because I want to keep a little bit of that wildlife in the shot there. So that's quite nice overall. So I'm going to keep it where we are at the minute there. I think this is kind of quite nice and soft and airy. 
So I think we're losing a little bit of the effect on our model's face. And to do that, I think we're going to need um, an adjustment layer. Uh, just new, or maybe actually more appropriately, we'll use a mask to do that. So let's use our layer mask option from the bottom of the panel here, right next to our adjustable layers, and make sure we are clicked on the gradient film mask. So if you're following this exactly, let's click on that. So our gradient film mask um, is applied to this white square there. Now, again, with our panels over on the far side on our vertical toolbar, make sure our color option palette is set to black and white. And using the brush tool here, this effectively would give us the option of masking out that effect over the top of our model's face so we can see her again. But that's a little bit too severe. So let's just step back here. I think the first thing that we need to do is reduce the power of the effect. So on the top toolbar here, we can reduce the opacity. Now this is going to reduce effectively the effect of this um, layer mask. So it's always best to kind of go a little bit lower than you maybe think you need, and then you can kind of always uh, increase it a little bit more. But I think 25%, yeah, let's, say, let's go halfway house, 27% there. Um, if I right click over the image with our brush selected, we can also reduce the hardness. So we're not gonna end up with that heavy edge uh, around our subject's face. Now let's zoom in a little bit more. And now we're just going to reduce this effect. I'm just making one or two clicks because the more clicks that you make, it is cumulative. So I've kept clicking over and over again in the same spot. It would become stronger and stronger. So it's a good thing to know because you can do that around faces and then you can kind of grade it a little bit more around bodies and around arms, just depending on where you want the effect to start grading into the, uh, to the background itself. So I want to keep a little bit of a glow going on around her but I want some areas to be a little bit more defined, something a little bit more announced, uh, pronounced, announced. <laughs> that's the wrong word entirely. So I think that's enough as it stands. Let's just have a look at it as a whole. So that's much better. I think we've got a much more uh, defined idea here. We've got a clear subject in the foreground. Our background's carrying all that light and all that energy. And we have got some of those kind of mystical colors that weren't there originally. They've just been added in as an effect, really. So this is the same process. And you can kind of keep going and going with these layers, um, adding more, tweaking more. Um, you can add more effects on top with brushes. So it depends on what you've got. But let me just show you a couple of options here. Now, in your brush panel, um, you can download extra brushes from the Internet. I know iPhotography has some already in its download library. Uh, if you're an iPhotography Plus member, you will have access to some exclusive ones in your kit bag, but you can get them online um, for free as well. There's loads of places if you just search for them. So I've got a number of different ones here. So let's have a look at some that I think could be quite useful. And maybe a snow effect. I know it's not really a snowy scene, but if we have that kind of little bit of a bokeh type effect over the top, I think that could be kind of quite pretty. So I'll choose the, the brush that I want. We'll change the size. Um, I think, yeah, we'll keep it around about 2,800. And then you need to pick out a color that your brush is going to carry. Now, because we want to keep it all within a similar vibe in terms of the colors, I'm actually going to use the color picker tool here and actually choose a color from our current um, artwork, which I think it'd be quite nice if we carried these pinks, maybe. It's gonna be quite soft. So I'm just gonna click around this tree and just get the right kind of tone of pink that I think would be quite pretty. We can always go back and redo this if it doesn't work. As I said, we're kind of doing it on the hock and sometimes that's quite a nice idea because it stimulates a lot of creativity, I find. Um, so now once we've got a new layer set up there, we've just clicked that from the little panel at the very, very bottom corner. I'm just gonna, Adjust the size of the document so I can see exactly where I'm placing this snow. And I'm just going to press on there. And I may just readjust the size and do another one again. And one more. And may I now actually alternate my colors and switch this panel. So from pink to white, and then just go over the same places again. Then if you've got uh, multiple brushes of a similar theme, like I have there, I may just change and do another one or two. Now our opacity is quite low here from our um, masking that we did before. So I think if we raise that up a little bit, we may get a bit more stronger effect. There we go. I think we're going to switch back to our pink and we're going to just switch to a different type of brush. Still within that snow uh, style one that I've got. And I think we'll do another one down here. And we'll maybe do one 
more again, but maybe a slightly more finer one around here and there. Okay, so as you can see, um, you could probably actually see it with a little bit more definition on a close-up as opposed to being a bit further away. Now you can see it's kind of gone over our model's face, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Again, it depends on the effect that you want. Um, but if we use another layer mask again, and just as we did before, making sure we go back to a very generic and general brush, otherwise the layer mask will try to kind of be painting out based upon the effect, the effect brush that we were using before, which was a snow. So we go back to a, a nice circle, on our brush tool and set to black. Let's just lower that opacity again so we can grade it out, reduce our hardness. Let's just zoom in on our subject's face here and you can just see that snow effect disappearing from it. We'll keep some of it in. I think some aspect of it is quite nice, but let's just remove it from where it may seem a bit heavy and a bit, a bit full on. Let's just take it away from down here. We don't want to take too much of it away because then it looks it looks too false, even though the whole idea is a little bit false. All right, there we go. So I think we're looking kind of quite nice there. But if you feel like this definition of all the snow effect that we've added is a little bit too much, there's no problem with actually just blurring it, making sure you're on the original layer and not the mask that we've been using. Uh, we've clicked on that and then just go to something as simple as filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Now you can choose different types of blurs. It again really depends upon your personal preference, but you then have got the option of just blurring the edges. So they're not so pronounced, but they are there on closer inspection. So I only want to do it a little bit, but I think it's kind of quite nice as it stands there anyway. But there we go. So what have we got? We've got a really nice kind of presentation of our image. Let's actually just kind of put it side by side to an original. So if we make a duplicate of the photograph, and if we just put one right back to the very start, you can see how much work we've done already in a short while. So we've added a lot more color into the background. We've added a bit more of a fake color that wasn't there exactly. We've added this really nice light orb. So we've taken away a lot of these distracting elements behind our subject, added in that really nice bright kind of fantasy lighting and a little bit of a dappling on top with that snow effect. So if we go kind of closer into our model, we can actually see that that uh, those layers and those effects are interacting with her as well. But there's so much more that could be done. These are just the effect. Uh, that these are just like the basic steps that you can take to applying to any kind of portrait to make it a little bit more creative, a little bit more exciting. But if you give this a go, it would be lovely to see the results. If you're an eye photography student, get those images into our gallery so our tutors and the rest of the students can have a look at those wonderful, wonderful creations. Thanks for watching.